Okay, welcome to the video. Uh, so this is a an almost sort of repeat from my Java version of Uno. Um, so this version is actually rewritten using C++ and SFML. And so you can find the sort of longer version discussion and sort of showing off of all the features of the application uh, in the Java video linked below. Uh, but for uh, this version you can find the GitHub also linked in the description and so I'm just going to mostly be showing uh, a very quick run through and showing the differences uh, compared to the Java version. So we still have all of the different rules you can change so the rules are uh, the standard kind of rules that you would find um, that you can change on the Steam version. I enjoy having the stacking plus two and plus four rule, so you can, uh, as a response to those cards, play your own, um, and then having to draw until you find a card that you can play um, as an on rule as well. And so you can toggle between the two players or four players where it changes whether the reverse is a regular change of direction or another skip. And then you've got the other rules, which uh, I won't go through here. So you can just reset all of them back to default. Um, and so those are the defaults there. The score limit just changes how long the round would go for um, in terms of the number of games you would play before it ends. Um, and so on the left here, you can choose uh, the strategy the AI players use. So offensive, defensive, chaotic or random, and then it will select one of those three, and so you can change it individually for each of them, or you can just leave it as random, which is the default, and it will select one of those three when the game begins. And you can also change your name, so if I click here, you can see it takes me over to here, and I can just enter Peter, and now back in the game, it has changed to Peter. So if I start the game, uh, you'll see that I have a um, four players here with the regular looking UNO cards and so I'll just play a game quickly against the AI and then I'll show a couple of other quick features. So you'll notice that the uh, game shows direction of play with the little moving orbs moving around and so when I reversed it it changed the direction. You can see that the text about events that are happening, so the skip that just happened there meant that it showed up the skipped. This will now, um, so Leroy obviously played a plus two and that bounced it to Jersey having to draw four. So that's the stacking rule in play. Um, so now Leroy is obviously getting down to two cards. They've just called Uno. So uh, we now need to hopefully get something to be able to do something against them, but we would need the direction to change. So you saw there was a cat play or keep, so I can call out for not having called Uno this time. And now I will skip. And I'll show off the draw four since I got rid of my red cards, assuming they don't change the color. Call that out again. They didn't call their Uno. So one of the differences for the layout this time in the C++ version is that I've moved this uh, information section at the top and so it's uh, more clearly visible so it's no longer covering up the play space. You can see here I have a choice of challenge or decline. So this is where they've chosen green and they've placed it onto I think a yellow. So I'm basically challenging to say if they had a card they could play on top of that yellow, whether it be a same number or uh, something else. Or if I declined, it'd just be I draw four. But if I challenge and I fail the challenge, I would draw extra. So we might challenge and just see. So I succeeded in the challenge. You can see the tick appeared at the bottom and then they drew the four. Um, and so now I get to continue my turn. Oh, they forced us to draw four this time. So we'll just show off the draw four from playing it. So it's different because the uh, segments don't actually move out 
they just increase in size in this time uh, compared to the Java version. So I can select whichever color that I want. So in this case, I've got mostly green, so I may as well choose green. And we'll just continue play around until the game ends. Thankfully we can continue playing because we've got colour still. Uh, we've been skipped. So we've called Uno and we've managed to get down to the one card, but now we can't play it, so we'll have to draw. So I might keep the draw four for now. So it's currently blue, but we can't play anything. So I have to draw some cards. And you can see that it just auto fills the hand pretty much when you've got a draw until you can get to a card that can play. Uh, we'll play the draw two. Let's uh, scan. Can't do anything. Hopefully, it's now red. So, I will show you how some of the other features that are here since this game is taking longer. So, if I press escape, then you can see the controls. So the general controls for a regular game, there's only pressing escape to pause and unpause, um, and Q will sort your hand, but there's also these other controls. So if you press zero, that'll enable debug mode, and then you can view any of these. So for example, I can turn on the action sequence and I can turn on the tree to be shown, to show what the actual tree of actions that are possible um, when they begin. So if I was to, for example, press 0 and then 4 and 5 and now I begin playing, you'll see that here I have the trees of the actual action sequence appearing there. So for most of them it's fairly simple, but when we play something like this with a draw 4, you can see the action sequence is a lot more complicated. Um, so if we just change it to red there, and you can see as the actions are going through, you can see a full debug log. Now, we can also remove cards from our hand, so if I press 6, it will remove cards. If I was to press 7, it would remove all cards, um, so that's a quick way to be able to test the, um, the end of the game screen is working. Uh, but also, we can reveal all the cards in the hand, so if I press 9, it shows me what everyone's cards are. So I'll just continue from here with all cards visible. And this lets you also see what the AI is actually doing for their turns. Let's make this more visible here. So that's our turn again. Um, we'll play our nine. So once you do turn on the hands all being visible, it won't go away until the end of the current round. Um, there's no way to make them hidden again, so just be aware of that. Um, whereas the other options are toggles. Uh, we might change it to green. Alas, was short-lived. Play the plus two. On green. Green! It's a problem that the uh, person on the other side there has only yellows. Because, uh, yeah, see now they're playing that, so it's a difficult situation to actually come to a close here. Uh, we'll just draw a card. So we might see if we can change to yellow, and we might actually try and help Jersey to win. 
And so you can see there that they reversed back and then Jersey immediately played their card and the game ended. So you can see here on the post game screen, um, because the score limit is one round and the score limit was reached, um, you can see that the options here below are just to return to lobby or new game, same settings. If this was a uh, different setting where it was a score limit of say requiring at least 300 or 500 or unlimited, it would have another option to um, continue to the next round and so that would just continue on. But we could either return to the lobby where we can set up some new different settings or we could just start a new game. At any point we can just return to the lobby just with the return to lobby and that would allow us to change settings to whatever we want um, or at any time we can just press escape and quit game. And that's all there is. So feel free to check out the GitHub projects uh, for either the Java or the C++, um, but they're both fully functional and you can uh, look at them. And there is also the other video uh, which goes through some of the other uh, variations of rules to be able to show examples of those. Uh, thank you for watching.